Hello and welcome to this tutorial about customising pick lists and opportunity stages within workbooks. This forms part of a series of training videos designed to help system administrators with modifying the system to suit the needs of your business and we'd recommend that you watch all of them for a complete picture of what can be done and how to do it. We're going to restrict the content of this session to how to modify the values in existing pick lists and how to change your opportunity stages but I'm sure you're also going to want to know about how to create new pick lists and that's covered in the video called Creating Custom Fields, so do take a look at that one. Let's start with pick lists. Pick lists help standardise the data in your system and make it quick and easy for users to select the right value. Out of the box, we provide a set of pick lists that are used by the drop-down fields in the system. Most of these will be standard fields, but if you've been working with our professional services team, they might have created custom fields and custom pick lists for you. Either way, once you're up and running and as your business processes grow and develop, you might find that you want to modify the choices available. In some instances, you can delete existing values and in others you can't. This is because there are some values that drive system behavior in workbooks, such as the complete option for activity status. But even if you can't delete values, you will be able to add additional ones. There are two types of pick list field in workbooks. The standard one allows users to select just one value from the pick list, and the multi-select one, as the name suggests, allows users to select multiple values. This behavior is controlled when you set up the custom field itself rather than on the pick list. When the field is a single select pick list, you can configure it so that if the option the users want to select isn't there, they can type in their own wording. And this is called an unrestricted pick list, and it's indicated to users within the tool by a plus symbol next to the drop down. Each pick list can be linked to more than one field if the selections make sense. For example, the country pick list is used on the country field on people, organisations, and leads. And you could choose to use it on a custom field if you wanted to. This makes maintenance easier because you only have to modify one list and the change is reflected across all of the fields. You can configure pick lists so that they automatically display in alphabetical order or you can stipulate your own order. If you've already got a list of values that you want to use in your pick lists, maybe from a different system or from Excel for example, you can simply paste them into workbooks rather than having to type them in manually as long as each new value is on a new line. To make reporting and creating filtered views easier, as well as affecting pre-built standard open and closed views, there are a handful of pick lists in workbooks where you map each value on the list to an associated state of either open or closed. This usually applies to standard status fields like the ones listed on the right, and also to opportunity stages which we'll look at in a few minutes. Here, for example, is a list of activity statuses and you can see that each one has an associated state of either open or closed. The display value for the second entry says closed, customer remains at risk, but this has been given an associated state of open. This means that any activities given this status will appear in your open views and automatically be excluded from your closed ones. I mentioned opportunity stages earlier. These operate in a similar way to pick lists, but are handled in a different place, which I'll show you when we move into workbooks. These are the out-of-the-box opportunity stages, but you can modify them or create new ones if your sales steps are different. Like some status pick lists, each one maps to an associated state of open or closed. For example, if you don't want unqualified opportunities to appear in your pipeline opportunity reports because you consider it too early in the sales process to include them, you might choose to map that stage to an associated state of closed. There's additional functionality with opportunity stages where you can also associate a percentage probability of the deal closing, which you can then use in weighted pipeline reports. Let's think about what changes we want to apply and then we'll move into workbooks to apply those changes. Let's imagine that we want to amend the values on the pick list used for lead source, which currently shows the choices on the right. We don't want to use the web link option anymore, so need to delete that option, but we do want to see values for contact us form and lead purchase, so we need to add a couple of values to the pick list. Let's say that we then want to amend the case status pick list so that it includes the option of blocked. 
This is an example of a status pick list where you map the value to an associated state, so we'll set this to be closed. Finally, let's say that you want to add a couple of additional stages to your opportunities of 3 in negotiation and 4 awaiting order, and you no longer want to see the preferred option in the list. The screenshot on the left shows the out-of-the-box stages that we saw earlier, and on the right is what we want to see, including the probability for each stage. Let's go into workbooks now to make the pick list and opportunity stage changes described in the last two slides. Here we are in workbooks with a lead on the screen. You can see on the right hand side lead source is web link. That's the value that we know we want to get rid of. Let's just have a look at that pick list while we're here. You can see on the right hand side it's got a small plus next to it. That's the thing that indicates to a user that this is an unrestricted pick list. They can type in whatever value they want to, although that won't add it to the underlying pick list. If I use the down arrow, you can see the three options that are there, campaign, trade show and web link. Remember, what we're intending to do is to remove the option of web link and add in options for lead purchase and contact us form. To make those changes, we need to be in the configuration area, so we'll go there the start button, configuration, and then customization. And no surprise, because it's a pick list value that we want to change, choose pick lists. To make finding the pick list a little bit easier, I would recommend that you apply a filter. So if I say filter name contains, what I'm going to do before I do anything else is just click view save, which means that every time I come to this list of pick lists, I'll have a filter already set up for me. I'm going to say, contains source. And there we go, there are a couple case sources, but it's the lead source type pick list that we want to go and amend. So click on it to open it. Here on the main tab, you can see there are some high level pieces of information, the name of the pick list and its description. If you're using multi-language, you may see a section about translations, but we're not going to cover that today. Further down, however, you can see there's a tick in the box that says this list is unrestricted, and we saw that within the tool itself. We saw the plus next to the drop down. You can also see that this particular pick list has been sorted alphabetically, and again at the bottom it talks about translations, which we're not covering today. If you go to the values tab, that's the one that shows you which values are available on that pick list right now, and you can see the ones that we saw when we used the drop down within the tool itself. Over on the far right for each of these options is a delete this entry option. And we know we want to get rid of web links, so we can just click on it to delete it. And we will get a message checking that we want to do that, so we can confirm that we do. And straight away that's gone. We did want to add in two new values though, so let's do that while we're here as well. So I'm going to click add. You can type each value into a separate line, or as I mentioned, if you do have a list that you've got in Excel or anywhere else, and you can just copy and paste it in. I've used Control-V just to paste that in there. Save and close, and then go and save and close my list. If I just go and open, reopen the lead that we looked at earlier, this top one here, you can see it looks exactly the same. Lead source still says web link. This time, however, if I go and have a look at the pick list values, web link as a value is no longer available to be selected, but contact us form and lead purchase have both been added for us. And notice that because this pick list was sorted alphabetically, even though, I don't know if you noticed, but I added lead purchase and then underneath that contact us form, but they're now showing alphabetically for us. So it's done exactly what we wanted it to do. Let's go and do a similar thing now with the case status pick list. So back into configuration, customization, and back to the pick lists. Straight away, I've got that view that I saved, the filtered view. So this time I'll say it's the case status pick list that we're wanting to modify. So I'll just say name contains status. And you can see there are lots of pick lists that do include status in their name. But it's this one, case statuses, that I want to use. So I'm going to click to open that one up. And the same thing as we saw with the lead source pick list. You see the name, you see the description. And this time though, the list isn't unrestricted, i.e. it is restricted. Users have to pick a value on the list or can't pick anything at all. Also notice this one isn't sorted alphabetically. And if I open the values tab, you can see these aren't sorted alphabetically. They're sorted in a kind of progression order in the way that you would move a case through a process. As before though, I'm going to click Add and we want an option that is blocked. 
So type or paste that in. What we didn't have last time was this field below it that says position because everything just went in alphabetically before. Now we've got a choice and if you use the pick list you can decide where you want to slot that value in. I'll put it in after on hold. And then at the very bottom of the screen we've talked about this idea of certain status fields having an associated record state of either open or closed. It defaults to open but we can change that to closed which I'll do now. Straight away you can see that blocked has been slotted in after on hold and over on the right hand side you can see that it's got an associated state of closed. On the far right notice that most of these values do have the delete button including the one that we've just set up. We could delete this entry if we wanted to. But a couple of them, the top one for new and then further down the one for closed, you can't delete those values and that's because the system needs those values in order to function properly. Let's save and close that amended pick list. Now if I were to create a new case, let's give it a status of blocked status that we've just created. I have to put some summary in because it's a mandatory field. Normally you'd fill in more details but just to illustrate the point if I save that new case. Now if I go to the cases landing page and by default my open cases open up and there's no sign there of that case I've just created. However if I go to closed cases you can see this top one I'm logged in as someone called Anthony Khan, so the case is assigned to me. Test blocked case is the one that I just created. It's appearing automatically in this system generated closed cases view because we gave that value, we gave blocked, an associated state of closed. So it won't appear in any of the system generated open views but will in the closed views. Let's turn now to modifying opportunity stages. These aren't tracked using a pick list like the values we've just looked at, but instead, if you go to configuration, still go to customization, but instead of choosing pick lists, choose record types. On the right hand side now, you'll see an alphabetical list of all the standard and any custom record types that you've created. And if you scroll down to find opportunities and open that up, you'll see a series of tabs. And the last but one on the right hand side is opportunity stages. Here you're looking at the seven out-of-the-box stages that we ship with, ranging from zero unqualified through to four one, and then options for qualified out and lost as well. Remember, what we want to do is add two new stages, one for in negotiation and another for a waiting order. And we want to remove the existing opportunity stage of three preferred. We'll start by creating the two new values. So click on new opportunity stage and enter the new stage name which is three in negotiation. Again, skipping the part about translations, we're not going to worry about that. We talked about the fact that you can map opportunity stages to probabilities. So we'll map this one to a probability of 40. Next, there is a mandatory field called mapped forecast status. It's a legacy field that isn't used anymore, but it, because it's mandatory, you do have to select something. So I'll just put commit in there. And then a bit like the pick list we looked at, you have to control the order in which these values are displayed. So we'll give this a number four. Might sound slightly counterintuitive because it's uh, stage three, but remember we had a stage zero as well, which will mean that this is the fourth option in the dropdown. At the bottom, similar to the status pick list we just looked at, we've got this concept of an associated record state. Do we consider something that's in negotiation to be open or closed? And I think for this one, it makes sense for it to be open. So I'm going to leave it as it is and click save and close. And I'm just going to repeat that again for the other new stage that I want, which is stage four awaiting order. Let's say that maps to a percentage of 80. Again, mapped forecast status, just pick anything. And in terms of the order, I'll make that number five. Again, I think that is a record state of open. We haven't got the order yet. We've got our two new stages. Of course, the numbering has gone a bit odd, so we will need to fix that before we're finished here. But before we do, let's have a look at an opportunity in the system. And you can see that this opportunity for Atlantic Office Refit has a stage three preferred. You can see here already we've got these other new options in here. But remember, we don't want to see the preferred option. 
So I'll close that down. So we need to get rid of the three preferred. To do that, just click on it. And you'll see at the top there is a delete button. But unlike with the pick list options where you could, if you were allowed to delete it, it just deleted straight away, you're asked what you want to do with existing opportunities that might be at three preferred. You've got to replace that stage with another. So I'm going to replace it with three in negotiation, one of my new options. And that's one of the reasons that I created the new options first. If ever you're going to delete an opportunity stage, make sure you've already got the stages in place that you want to move anything to. So now I can click delete and replace. What I'll also do while I'm here is just tidy up these numbers a little bit. So I'll change the one for one. Let's just go and have another look at that opportunity that we did just look at, the one for Atlantic. Remember, it had three preferred as the stage, but we deleted that option and moved it across to three in negotiation. So that's happened to this opportunity and it will have happened to all the other opportunities in the system that did previously have preferred on them. That approach only works when the opportunities themselves are closed as in the record itself isn't open and in use anywhere, this will work. So if you are going to change opportunity stages, my recommendation is to make those changes when users aren't in the system. To recap then, we've looked at how to modify pick list values, both in terms of adding and deleting values. There are some instances where you won't be able to delete a value because the system needs it. If you want to add several values, remember that you can paste them in, providing that each one's on a new line. You can control where in the list the value appears, either automatically by sorting the pick list alphabetically, or by using the position option. If you want users to be able to type in a value if the one they want isn't on the pick list, then set it up as an unrestricted pick list. Remembering that this doesn't add the value to the list, it simply adds the value to that field on that particular record. Whereas if you set up a restricted pick list, users must either select a value from the list or skip the field. Some status pick lists, such as activity or case statuses, require you to map the values to an associated state of either open or closed, which makes filtering and reporting much easier. We didn't set up any brand new pick lists, but of course you can do that if you're creating a custom field that needs one. That's covered in the video about creating custom fields. We also looked at opportunity stages. Even though within the product these look like a regular pick list, you have to go to the opportunity record type and the opportunity stages tab to be able to access them. But just like pick lists, you can add or delete values. But if you do delete any, you will be asked to specify which stage you want to apply to the existing opportunities instead of the one that you're deleting. You can control the order in which the options appear in the list, and like some pick lists, you map each stage to an open or closed state. In addition, you can map each stage to a percentage probability, which is useful if you want to produce weighted pipeline reports. You do also have to specify a mapped forecast status too, but as I mentioned, that's not used anymore, so you don't need to worry about what you select there. And that's it for this session. You should now feel much more confident about managing and maintaining your pick lists and opportunity stages. You can find written information about pick lists on our knowledge base and do look out for our other system administrator videos covering creating custom fields and setting up form layouts. Thanks for watching.